Hi everyone, Amy here with Amy's Wears and I have a funny coffee card to make for you today using some new April stencils from A Colorful Life Designs. Now this is Coffee Pot and this is called Pothead which is intended to kind of work in this space. And here's a photo of the finished card to let you know the direction that we're going with this funny punny card. So I have a couple of Distress inks. I collect the mini cubes. I have uh, Ground Espresso and black soot and I'm basically just going to mask off certain areas to kind of create the look that I want. I am working on an inexpensive uh, craft cardstock that I got from Amazon. I originally was in the market looking for some craft that was thicker and I could use for card bases and sadly this isn't it. So now I have a bunch of it that I'm trying to use up just as you know panels or card fronts and things like that. So I'm just lining it up in the center of this panel of a two size cardstock that is uh, I believe four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm just kind of masking off the edges with some post-it tape just so I don't get ink where I don't want it and then I'll use magnets to hold the whole shebang down while I do some simple ink blending now I'm starting with the black soot and going around the outer perimeter of this coffee pot and I'm also going to um, use the black as well for the top handled part of the coffee pot and I'm trying to go a little bit heavier handed on the edges and a little bit lighter handed in the center to kind of give it a, a bit of a natural highlight because I want it to appear as if it's rounded because you know it would be round in in real life so I'm just kind of creating that illusion by going heavier handed on the edges and then just working my way around the rest of the design now what's really cool about this particular stencil is it has different components so it has the coffee pot and then it has the little section you know emulating the liquid coffee and then it also has some steam and a heart so you can kind of choose whatever components of it you want to and they're spaced out enough on this six by nine stencil that it's really easy to mask off the areas that you don't want to use so here I'm just lining it up kind of deliberately leaving a little bit of um, a line around the the bottom of the coffee pot just because I think it was intended that way and it gives it kind of a cool graphic look and now I'm coming in with my brown blending brush and the ground espresso color of distress ink now distress ink is a dye ink so this is really sinking into this quite textured craft cardstock but it's giving it kind of a cool texture as I go and I'm doing the same thing trying to go a little bit heavier handed on the sides and a little bit lighter handed in the center just to kind of give it a little bit of interest and a natural highlight so now this portion is done and I do want to use this really cool steam as well as the heart so I'm just kind of positioning this where I want it and then masking off the little heart and the and the top of the coffee pot just so I don't accidentally transfer ink and I'm going light handed with the black soot. I'm just using that black blending brush, just trying to create the illusion of a little wispy steam coming off the top of the coffee pot. And now here I'm just masking off the heart. And here I'm just using residual ink on my red blending brush and just putting a few of these cute little hearts around. So that's gonna finish this portion of it. Now, I wanna make sure that it's very dry for the next step. So you could go about this different ways. You could maybe use a white pigment ink or something that's going to layer on top of the dye ink, or you could kind of move it more up into the glass portion and use a darker color. But I wanted it to be white on top of this dark coffee. And here I was testing to see if it was dry before I embossed. And good thing I did because it was not dry at all. So I hit it with my heat tool and then I brushed the area with my um, embossing powder tool from the rabbit hole designs. And now I have this uh, pothead three by six lined up directly over where the coffee sits in the coffee pot and I masked off the other part. And now I'm just squishing my sticky embossing ink down. So you could use this with a little finger dauber or if you have like a blending foam, but because it was pretty cut and dry I just went straight from the top and just really wiggled it down there a couple times just to make sure it was good even coverage and now I'm going to coat it with my white Brutus Monroe alabaster embossing powder and then hopefully it will just stick to the words and not to the other areas that maybe weren't completely dry 
So if I have any residual left over, I can use a little tiny brush just to kind of get rid of that. But overall, it did a pretty, uh, pretty good job and I got pretty even coverage. Now, if it didn't coat it completely and it wasn't quite as bright white as I wanted, I'll show you a little trick to kind of touch that up a little bit. So I'm just going to flick the back of the paper and try and get any residual off. And now I'm going to hit it with my heat tool. So you want to make sure you get your heat tool warmed up. Let it go for a couple minutes before you bring it to the paper. And then only do it as long as you need to to melt the embossing powder. Because you don't want it, you don't want to overdo it and have it really sink into the paper and not be as bright of white. Um, and you don't want to warp your paper as well. So once it's cooled off, I'm just using a little... A microfiber cloth just to kind of rub off any of the residual embossing um, powder that I put down or the um, static powder that I put down so it didn't kind of dull my ink blending. Now here's a little tool if you are struggling uh, with your words not being fully embossed. You can use a white gel pen and kind of fill in any little spaces that maybe didn't get coated quite well enough with the powder. And I'm also using that white embossing pen just to mark some little highlights on the glass, on the coffee, on the handle, and then I decide ultimately ultimately to do little polka dots all over the background because I thought that was cute too. So a white gel pen is definitely a must have if you're a paper crafter. Um, they really come in handy for creating highlights on your little cute stamped images or in situations like this where you need to touch up some white heat embossing or just to kind of, you know, draw little interesting elements on your card. So it's one of those things that's um, definitely good to have in your crafty stash. So I'm just working through the front of the panel, putting polka dots randomly, putting little highlights on these three hearts, and ultimately it's just adding some interest to an otherwise pretty simple design. There's not really any um, bulk or dimension or anything here. Now I did decide that it needed some grounding. Now I should have probably moved this up a little bit. I had it directly lined up with the bottom of the coffee pot, but I should have actually kicked it up just maybe another eighth of an inch or something like that but I wanted to create some sort of grounding for the coffee pot just to make it look like it wasn't quite floating and I'm coming in heavier handed right under as if it were a shadow and that will give it kind of a little faux tabletop to be sitting on and again I'm just doing a little bit more touching up I'm being a little bit uh, persnickety here it wasn't quite um the full coverage of the letters. So now on the inside of the card, I decided to add a little element. So I have this, um, I think it's Coffee Love is the name of it. I will link it in the video description box below with all the other products that I use, but I wanted to add a little something interesting to the inside of the card. So I brought that stencil in and did some light ink blending on the inside just to give it a little surprise. So that's gonna finish the card pretty pretty easy fun <laughs> punny card with these new stencils now there's a lot of coffee related stencils but there's some tea and then also some that are not coffee related at all that are just cool geometric great for year-round stencils so be sure to check that out thanks for spending time with me today and i'll catch you next time bye